Uh, yes, uh, uh, it's shocking. It's going to be shocking. I know. It's you know some some people might might want to hold on and and sit tight, but I'm I'm actually going to defend Trump uh, in in uh, in the news segment today. Uh, it happens once in a while, but it it is uh, it is looking. Um, uh, it does happen once in a while, and, and it will be happening today. So uh, uh, over the weekend, Trump gave a speech uh, where he talked about a bunch of different things. And, and one of the things he said, uh, he said a few things we'll talk about, but one of the things he said, which made the news and made the headlines and made, made the mainstream media and made commentators go basically ballistic, is that at some point he said something like, uh, if I lose the election, there will be a bloodbath. And that's what everybody ran with. Everybody ran with Donald Trump is threatening a bloodbath if he loses the election. And, uh, you know, violence, and this is horrible, anti this, anti that. And, and people really went nuts over this statement. But this is where it really is important to listen to what people actually say. Go to a transcript or watch a video. And in this case, it's not exactly what he said. What did he say? He, talk, he was talking about the car industry, and we'll get, we'll get to his horrible ideas about the auto industry in a minute. But he was talking about the auto industry, and he was talking about the fact that Mexico has, uh, you know, Mexico is basically, why is this not working? What is going on? Oh, there it is, working. Uh, that Mexico basically is, is picking up massive amounts of uh, automobile production. Uh, a lot of Chinese companies are building massive plants in Mexico with the idea of building automobiles, primarily electric cars, almost all electric cars, in Mexico and then shipping them to the United States. Uh, but it's not just the Chinese. I, I think that uh, American companies, are, uh, particularly given the latest uh, uh, strikes and the labor union and the... Uh, that stuff, uh, they basically have, have also moved to Mexico uh, to, build, uh, to build cars and uh, with the idea of importing them into the United States from Mexico and thus avoiding the, uh, the Trump tariff on Chinese goods, which he has promised would be at least 60%. So he was riling against this and saying he's not going to make that happen. And, he, and, and what he said actually was that if I don't get elected, there will be a bloodbath in the auto industry. That is, that the American auto industry will be destroyed by all these imported cars from Mexico. But that is, of course, not at all. Not at all. How uh, the mainstream media or how commentators interpreted it or presented his statements to the world uh, they completely, right? Uh, they completely ignored and evaded, right? Uh, the context and presented it as if I don't get elected, there will be a bloodbath. And uh, this is typical. It's typical of how they treat Trump, but it's not just Trump. Uh, Fox does this to people it opposes. Uh, the mainstream media on the left does it to anybody they oppose. Uh, a, a lot of just centrist stuff. A lot of times they just don't consider, they don't review, they don't investigate the context. And what they do is just report some statement out of complete context. This is why I've told you many times, whenever there's a quote, I try to go to the original sources, I try to find what's going on, I, I try to read what was actually said, and the reality is that Donald Trump often says really, really stupid, really, really, really horrible things. You don't have to make it up. But, you know, and I think what happens when they do make it up, particularly in a case like this where it's so obvious, is that it, the media just loses whatever credibility it has. People stop paying any attention to them. Uh, and, and basically, uh, you know, they, they become irrelevant irrelevant to the conversation and to the world. And, and that's a tragedy because media is important. And that's really, you know, where we are, uh, you know, where we are now. This is only 
reinforce people's skepticism about the mainstream media, and justifiably so. Now, if we consider one other statement he made in that same speech. So in the speech, he, he's talking about illegal immigrants, and this is the way the Washington Post reports it. So I'll just read you how the Washington Post reports it. Again, and I think hopefully this gives you a little bit of sense of my attempt to be objective. I don't always get it right, I'm sure, but my attempt to be objective. Here we go. So it says, former President Trump ratcheted up his dehumanizing rhetoric against immigrants Saturday by saying that some who are accused of crimes are not people. I don't know if, they, if you call them people, he said at a rally near Dayton. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. I, and I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say. Right. So now he's calling certain immigrants who commit crimes uh, not really people. Animals, I think he later commented on him. But of course, even here, it's not exactly what he said. Now, he, it was criminals. But he explicitly said which kind of criminals he was talking about. He was talking about, uh, uh, what is it, MS-13. He was talking about the most brutal, horrible criminals that he claims completely uh, uh, bogusly that are being uh, released uh, from jail on purpose in order to send them to the United States. And as a consequence, crime is out of control in the U.S. and they're committing massive crimes all over the U.S. Now, all of that is bogus and you can criticize all of that. But to call criminals that belong to MS-13 and given what they do and how they behave and the, 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 the just unbelievable violence that they engage in, to call them animals eh, is par for the course. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. To call them subhuman or non-human is not that radical uh, and, and not that bad. And to present it as dehumanizing immigrants uh, is, is, again, you don't need this. Donald Trump says really, really stupid things and really, really, really bad things all the time. You can attack him on the reality of actually what he says. For example, his comments about crime accelerating and crime going out of control and gangs all over the place, all of that is bogus. The stats are completely opposite of that. Now, of course, nobody believes the stat. Remember, there was carnage in the streets of America in 2016 when he was running one of the safest years in all of American history. It doesn't seem like his voters care one iota, one iota, about... Uh, about facts, about stats, about reality. They care about the emotion, just like the left does. It's all about emotion. And the emotions tell them there's rabid crime. Crime is all over the place. It's out of control. We need to stop it. And it's immigrants. It's illegal immigrants that are doing it, which is all nonsense. Uh, New York today is safer than it's been. I mean, just. I mean, you find me the crime statistics that show otherwise. Uh, there was just a study done about uh, illegal immigrants, uh, the only state in the U.S. that actually documents who's an illegal immigrant in their jail system and who's legal immigrant, who categorizes them like that, is Texas. There's just a study done, and clearly illegal, illegal immigrants you know, commit crimes at a far lower rate than, um, than Americans do. And uh, legal immigrants commit crimes at an even lower rate. So there's just no evidence that illegal immigration is causing a crime wave. It just is not happening. Now, you can skew the news in a way that it sounds like it, but there's just no data to support it. You can look at crime statistics from Texas, from, from California, from New York City, from any of these places. And what you'll see is that New York City is a lot safer today than it was in the 80s and early 90s. Crime, crime, reported crime, not prosecuted, crime. All right, I mean, you guys can, yeah, Scott, facts don't, are not relevant. Scott is one of those people that it, what matters is defeating the left. And if, if pretending that crime is high or convincing yourself even better that crime is very high in order to get energized about um, 
about uh, uh, you know going after the left and so be it. Uh, D.C. is the one, one city, I talked about this, I did a whole program about this, about the different crime statistics. D.C. is the one city where crime is clearly up. No question, it's up. New York, crime is way down. Way down. Look at the stats, the actual evidence. Again, I'm talking about violent crime, shoplifting in certain parts of the country, of course. But that's not, that's not illegal immigrants. It's not illegal immigrants. We're talking about violent crime. So when I say crime is down, I'm talking about violent crime. Rape, murder, assault with a weapon. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, you know, uh, stealing cars for parts in certain parts of the country is up. But actual violent crime is down. You can say bogus all you want. <laughs> Find, I mean, there are a few cities where it's up, but the overwhelming majority of cities... Uh, like 18 out of the top 20, it's down. Um, let's see. All right. So that was, uh, those are the things that the MHD media got completely wrong about Trump. And it, unfortunately, because there are lots of other things they could go after Trump for. For example, it wasn't made enough of a big deal about the fact that Trump's solution to Car companies are building factories in Mexico and importing the cars into the U.S. is to slap 100% tariff on automobiles coming in from Mexico. That's his solution. And again, that is, uh, that is uh, uh, you know, central planning. That is him being a, uh, a, a, you know, the equivalent of a leftist Democrat. It's Donald Trump from the 1980s uh, being upset that we were importing as much as we were from Japan. It's Donald Trump who is completely ignorant and stupid about both economics and definitely about trade. Uh, so uh, that's what they should be focused on. The 100% tariff, which is suicidal for the American consumer, it's suicidal for American auto companies. Just look at how well the, uh, the uh, uh, tariffs of steel have worked out for American industry, been a disaster for American industry. And yeah, you're going to tell me that's not true, but I can cite the papers, the evidence. We can go on and on, on and, 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 and show you, right? Uh, so yeah, here we are. Here we are. Uh, instead of attacking Trump on the actual content of his speeches, they have to take what he says out of context, and you don't have to. And, and you know, sometimes he's attacked in context. Charlottesville, he was awful. He was awful. I've read that speech many, many times. I've watched the video of that speech many times, and he was beneath contempt. Here, what he said was completely taken out of context. There we are. And it was made all the news headlines over the weekend.